Welcome to GED Math and Dirt News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Welcome to GED Math and Third Days. My name is Jeremy Tinsley, and I'll be your host for the day. Today, I will be covering one of the questions that has inundated my email, my Facebook, um, and a lot of people have problems, have issues with this problem. Um, it says mathematical reasoning on the example. This is a practice test offered on GD.com. Um, look under the link. Look at the link below, and you'll see a link for this GED exam, a math exam, if you want to take it. So first of all, let's look at the question. A scientist is studying red maple tree growth in a state park. She measured the trunk diameters of a sample of trees in the same month every other year. The table shows the data for two of the trees. So, of course, we look at the tables, and we look at the, and we know the tree one and tree two. We see that every other year is one, three, five, seven, 9, 11, and 13, and we see the diameters of the trunk. This is the final year in which she will collect the data. When her data collection is complete, she will predict future red maple tree growth. First of all, so the scientist plots the data for tree two. Okay, that's important. Tree two, they gave you information about two trees. They only want you to plot data for tree two on a coordinate grid. She begins by plotting data for year three. So now if we look at year three, you can almost think as this is the independent variable, and this is the dependent variable, so X and Y. So if we want to chart year three, we would do three and 12. So again, we go on our chart, our X is three, our Y is 12, right there. And we want to do the same thing for year 11. The year is 11, your X is 11, your trunk diameter is 14, your Y is 14. So we go to, to year 11, we come straight up to 14.4, which is right in the middle between 14 and 15. And that's how you will plot those two points. You definitely will have to plot points on your GED mass exam. So you have to be sure you know how to plot points on a coordinate plane. So that's the first part of this question. Okay, let's go to the next part of this question. Let me clear my screen. And let's look at the second part of this question. Now, if you notice, the data hasn't changed. So on the left side, it's still the same information they gave us before. Now, let's look at the question. The scientist creates an equation that models her data for each tree so that she can predict the diameter in the future. Complete a linear equation that fits the data for tree one, where X is the year and Y is the trunk diameter in inches. Click on the variables and number you want to select and drag them into the boxes. I know, I know, you're looking at this problem saying, what, 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 is, what do they want me to do? Again, when you get yourself worked up on exam, what I want you to do is take a deep breath and you say to yourself, what, thou, what do I know? That's the first thing, so no matter how difficult you think a problem is, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to say, what? do I know? So first of all, they want a linear equation. Okay? So a, a linear equation is y equal mx plus b. If you don't know that, it's on your formula sheet, but you should know it. You should know m stands for slope. And you should know b stands for your y-intercept. So what they want to do is from this information, they want you to find the slope and they want you to find the y-intercept. Again, if we, we can find a slope from two points, we learn how to find a slope from a graph, but this is not any of that. This is a table. So what you want to do in order, remember, second thing you know, data for tree one, okay? So you want to know a linear equation that fits the data for tree one. Okay, so we're going to look at this. And that's our change in y. Because we remember slope is equal to rise over run or the change in y over the change in x. 
So from eight, 18.6 to 19.6, we went up positive six. So our, our point six is our numerator. Okay, our change in X, we went from one to two. So we went up plus two. Okay, you should know this, you should be able to do mental math and know that means our slope is 0.3. Okay, so we should know our point, our slope is 0.3. Okay, the Y intercept. Wow. Okay, there's so several ways we can do this. Okay, we can use a point and a slope to find the equation. Let me show you a simple way to do this problem. What you recognize or what you should know is that slope is the constant rate of change. So if you notice from year one to year three, it is going up 0.6. So that means every year it is going up 0.3. Well, that's our slope. That's the constant rate of change. So if it's going up three years, if we go backwards, it's going down three years. So in year one, if it was 18.6, year zero, because that's what the y-intercept is when x equals zero, instead of adding 0.3, we wanna subtract 0.3. So 18.6 minus 0.3 is 18.3. So this is our y-intercept. So now we have to drag it so we can make an equation. So remember, y equal mx plus b. So y equal 0.3 x plus 18.3. That was the question of the day. Um, I hope this helped you. Um, remember, it's two possible questions you can get from this example. Plotting points on a coordinate plane and finding the slope, y-intercept, and an equation from a table. I hope this. Now, the third part of this problem, the third part. So one data set, one question, one data, one set of data gave us three questions. Let's read it. So it's still the same data on the left, but now we have a third question. In year 13, the scientists will put a tree rat around tree one to protect it from the winter snow. That height of the tree rat needs to be 45 inches. The rat is priced per square foot. To the nearest square foot, how many square feet of rat does she need? Okay, so it's going around the tree. So we know that surface area. So if you look at the shape, it looks like a cylinder. So first of all, let's get our formula for the surface area of a cylinder, okay? And our surface area for a cylinder is SA equal two pi RH plus two pi R squared. Wow. Well, how do we do this? What are they talking about? I don't remember doing anything like this. Again, take a deep breath, take a deep breath and figure out what's given. Don't get yourself all set, all upset. These questions with practice, you gotta identify. The first thing of solving a, why, a, a word problem is identifying what you know. So what do we know? Okay, so we look at our formula. Surface area equal two pi r h. So we need the height. We know our height, 45 inches. We need our radius. Okay, for tree one, for year 13. So we look at year 13. By year 13, our radius, I mean, our diameter is 22.2. You should know that the radius is half the diameter. So if you, if you didn't know, um, is half, or if you don't, if you can't do it uh, with mental math, your radius is 11.1. .1. We could always use our calculator and I'll show you that uh, momentarily. Two pi RH plus two pi R squared. So let's set it up. Two, you should know pi is 3.14. You should know the radius now is 11.1 .1 plus the height, which is 45. Okay. 
Now, if you notice, 2 pi r squared is the top. It's this section here. And down here. We don't need that. We don't need that because it's going around. It's not covering the top. This is why most people miss this question. We only need the surface area around the tree, which is 2 pi r h. Let me grab our calculator. Oh, let me move everything down. Let's erase this, this, this. And let me move everything down so we can see everything. Okay, move it over. Okay, we're gonna put this down here and again, we're gonna erase this right here. Okay, so let's do this problem. We don't need the two pi r squared because that's the top. Okay, so two pi r h two times pi times r eleven point one times h, which is forty five. We're gonna hit enter. Our answer is three thousand one hundred thirty six. So that's the surface area. Okay, so we got to keep that in mind. Let's minimize this. Thirty one thirty six. Thirty one thirty six. Okay, the problem is our surface area is an in inch squared, but they're asking for the answer in square feet. In square feet. So let me give you a couple seconds to think what we need to do. Welcome back. So we had 31. 36.8, so 3,136 and 8,600. But that answer is not of a multiple choice. That's because our answer is in squared inches. They want it in square feet. So just think. Okay, so let me draw my uh, uh, square here. And we got one by one, one by one. So that's feet squared. But we don't have our measurement in feet. We have it in inches. So 12 inches, one foot is 12 inches. So 12 times 12 is 144 inches squared. So we have to multiply 12 times 12 to get 144. That's our area. Okay, so 12 by 12, 144. So we want to divide by 144. Okay, so we're going to go to our calculator. Since we already have our answer here, 3136, we will just hit division. We're going to hit our 144. We're going to hit enter. And our answer is 21.7. But again, we can use our calculator to round off. So I'm gonna hit mode, come down to float, go to zero, quit mode, press enter. Oops, hold on, let me go back up. Press enter, and it rounds off to 22. Okay, so we can use our we can use this calculator for anything. You just gotta practice, practice, practice. This calculator is your friend okay using my ebook using my video tutorials you are guaranteed to pass now why do i say guaranteed to pass because i have a 30-day money back guarantee on my ebook and as of today march 18th 2021 i have a hundred percent pass rate that means everybody every single person 
that has used my tutorials, that have used my ebook, that have been in my class, have passed their math exam 100% over the last six years. You've came to the right place to watch your videos. If you purchased the ebook, you bought the right uh, 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 book to help you pass your math exam. If you didn't buy the book, look below. You should see a discount code for watching this video. Make sure you check out my website, passgdmath.com, and you can purchase it in one click. Okay, for $19.99, use that discount code, and it'll be even less than that. And it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee because I'm telling you, you're going to pass within 30 days. So make sure you check my website out. Make sure you subscribe. You like, you comment. I need you to, I love the comments. I love the, the, uh, the specific comments so I know how to improve my videos because I want more people to pass this exam. Over the last four to six weeks, almost 40 people have bought into this program and either passed their math exam or pass their math exam and receive their GED diploma. I'm telling you, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. So I hope you agree with me. See you soon.